Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that we are on the lands of the Yagara and the Turrbal people, and I would like to pay my respects to their elders, those who have passed on in the dream time and continue to guide us, and those who walk with us today and, of course, look forward to leaders emerging. My name is Angela Young. I'm a Cullerly and Coal woman and the Executive Director of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Engagement here at CHQ. And I'm here to formally welcome you to Queensland Children's Hospital on behalf of our Chief Executive, Frank Tracy, who couldn't be with us today. We're very excited to have you to launch this incredible piece of work, which of course is designed to keep our most precious resources our babies, or in my language, our jarjams, are safe. Um, I would like to acknowledge Sue and Ruth from Kids Safe for allowing us to host this auspicious event here today and welcome you all in the room and online for the national launch of this incredible guide, best practice guide for the design of safe infant sleeping environments. Today, we're joined by several contributors to the guide the Editorial Committee and Mr. Greg Fowler, Principal Policy Advisor, Health Office of the Premier. Thank you all for joining us here today. Thank you again for choosing Queensland Children's Hospital for this um, joint piece of work. And Frank has really enjoyed being part of the group that have put the guide together. Sorry, he couldn't be with you today. You're going to be expertly emceed by uh, one of our acting nursing directors of our child health service, Kathy Marin. And I know you have some incredible uh, messages from uh, ministers and your patron. So thank you again uh, and congratulations on your launch. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Kathy Marin. I'm Acting Nursing Director for Child Health Services in Children's Health Queensland, and I'm Chair of the Child Health Sub-Network of the Queensland Child and Youth Clinical Network. Um, so it's my pleasure to welcome you today as well, and uh, I'll be your MC. So I would like to introduce and invite to the, the podium Dr. Ruth Barker to explain the genesis of this wonderful document. Thank you. Thanks, Cathy. Um, so I was just telling someone in the room that this particular product guide um, had a genesis a bit like the gestation of an elephant. Um, it was very, very slow and, and in, at times quite painful to deliver. Um, but I think we've got quite a um, comprehensive and workable document. And when we set out to try to pull this document together, I was asked what sort of data we had about um, infant sleep accidents or events that occur during infant sleep. And as many of us know, it's really problematic to understand what goes wrong when an infant is asleep because people aren't usually watching their infant sleep. But what I did say is I do know what, um, what infants don't like. If you do certain things to infants, they can't breathe properly. And so that started the thought processes of how we could pull this guide together, talking about translating what we know about infant physiology and anatomy um, into a language that perhaps uh, educators and industry could understand so that they could avoid certain traps. Because what makes an infant vulnerable? It's their anatomy, their physiology, and the environment in which they sleep. And what we know is that it's not just about the cot. So um, the infant sleep product market has really exploded. And even though a cot like this has a mandatory standard, the mattress that the infant sleeps on does not have a mandatory standard. But there are lots of other accoutrements that go with the sleep environment. So it's the outfit that the baby sleeps in, the bumpers that get put in the cot, the blankets, the apnea monitor, and so on and so forth. Um, so whether you sleep in a standard cot like that or a designated magnificent bed, this is my dog sleeping on her bed. The other issue is that we realize that in real life, we often still end up on the couch. 
or co-sleeping. And industry knows this and there are products that are marketed to these issues as well. Uh, things like baby boxes, nest products, co-sleeper products, and all of these have new hazards that in this complex environment of how a baby is sleeping and how people are managing that sleep, there are all sorts of new hazards. So we had to be really holistic when we were thinking about the sleep environment. As parents, we're vulnerable to all sorts of misleading claims, such as for this product, which says that they can reduce the uh, likelihood of SIDS because the mesh in that hammock is breathable. And yet you can see that infant is not flat uh, and his neck is pushed up, not to mention the fact that he's looking almost big enough that he can climb out of that and there's an entrapment hazard there. Um, we're also vulnerable to mixed messaging. So although this product does have a mandatory standard that has, requires a label that says this is not to be used as a sleep environment for a baby or as a sleep surface, you can see that it's marketed with a sleeping infant and you can also see that in, this infant is also in a compromised position with his chin down on his chest, let alone if he manages to flip over onto that very soft surface. And it can also be difficult for us to understand that products that are that do have uh, mandatory standards like this car restraint, um, which is designed to protect infants in the event of a crash, and it offers really great protection for infants in a crash, can also create new hazards when they introduce additional padding behind the head. So this is a little infant that was loaded outside uh, the Mata Hospital here, and I walked past and snapped this photo you can see that with the additional padding behind the head, his head is tipped forward. Um, he's a very little baby. And I have to say, he's not actually clicked into the, um, the restraint yet. So there are other safety issues in this as well. So um, this infant guide has been a really holistic attempt at trying to address all of these complex issues with some basic fundamental principles, starting with infant physiology and infant anatomy and translating it into a document that um, hopefully industry and parents and educators can understand so we, that we can all be on the same page and starting back with uh, industry design and development, the products can be designed with infant physiology and anatomy in mind so that the industry can design better and um, parents can choose better and we can all sleep better. Thank you. Okay, now, thank you, uh, Dr. Barker. It's now my pleasure to uh, play a video from the Honor Honourable Shannon Fentiman, the Attorney General and Minister for Justice, Minister for Women, Minister for Prevention of Domestic and Family Violence. Unfortunately, the Minister was unable to be with us in person today, but we do have um, a video for you. Mm -hmm. Do I can Good morning, and thank you so much for inviting me to today's national launch of the Infant Safe Sleeping Guide. I'm sorry I can't be there in person, but I am delighted to be included in today's launch. I would like to start by acknowledging the fantastic work of KidSafe in putting together the guide. This is the first of its kind in Australia. Over the past 20 years, the infant product market has exploded here in Australia and across the world. And with more families heading online to do their shopping, especially since the pandemic, we've had to make sure parents are aware of the safety risks of products before they shop. That's why this new safe sleeping guide will be invaluable for Queensland families. The information in the guide is based on a combination of medical and expert advice on what makes a sleeping environment unsafe for an infant. I hope this guide will become an important go-to for those in the infant product industry. Enjoy the launch today. I would now like to introduce and welcome to the podium Susan Tears, who is the CEO of KidSafe Queensland. And uh, I'll hand over to you. Thank you very much. Um, 
this has been, and I want to thank the Minister too for her kind words, and, uh, and she did focus on Queensland families. This is for all Australian families, not just Queensland families, but of course she's a Queenslander. Um, so look, it was my privilege to chair this, uh, this working group. It was a cast of thousands. Uh, well, it felt like that sometimes, of herding cats. But through the development of this very important, and, and if I say so myself, it's a very impressive industry guide. Um, given that in 2019, thank you. Um, given that in 2019, two infants died every week in Australia, they died suddenly and with no clear explanation. And uh, it certainly led us to believe that we needed to look at the products and the environment that the baby was sleeping in. And uh, we also acknowledged as a group that there are significant gains in understanding and reducing the incidence of SUDI in Australia. But despite uh, all of these significant gains over the last two decades, um, and the very important back to sleep campaigns, infant sleep accidents remain significant. Uh, education alone is not going to be the solution. So when designing and construction infant sleep environments, industry looks to standards guidance, but generally have little understanding of infant vulnerability during sleep. And this has become quite evident with the inclined sleep products, for example, where they were sold in large volumes and then later recalled due to a high number of sooty deaths. And there are so many products sold where there's no regulation at all. So there are no guidelines for manufacturers to follow and the consumers, they don't have a clue. So this document focuses on developing a shared language between industry, regulators, products, uh, health advocacy groups uh, in order to design safer infant sleep products. And this document will augment all of the other important work in the safe sleep space. I particularly, this is the editorial committee, but I particularly want to acknowledge the time and expertise contributed by Dr. Ruth Barker, Professor Janine Young, and Dr. Catherine Niven, without whom this document would not be as robust nor detailed. There's the cast of thousands. Um, our contributors from a broad range of organisations, as you can see. Um, I do also need to mention my link, my conduit to the ACCC and product safety managers throughout Australia, our own Queensland Fair Trading product safety manager, Adrian Rudenko, who provided me his support, enthusiasm and sage advice. Um, having said all of that, we're going to actually now have to produce another guide and that's for consumers. This guide is aimed at industry and it's a bit too dense for the average consumer. So we're gonna start it all again. Um, look, I'm the CEO of KidSafe Queensland, but I represent KidSafe nationally. Um, but here in Queensland, we're very honored to have as our patron, Her Excellency, Dr. Jeanette Young, the governor of Queensland, who is actually going to, even though she's not here, officially uh, launch this Infant Safe Sleeping Environment Guide. As patron of Kids Safe Queensland, I'm very pleased to be officially launching this important publication, the Best Practice Guide for the Design of Safe Infant Sleeping Environments. At the outset, I congratulate the Board of Kids Safe Queensland on taking the initiative to develop a guide which can contribute immediately to reducing the risk of fatal sleeping accidents in infants. Fortunately, research and excellent public education programs over the last two decades have produced a dramatic decline in the number of babies dying suddenly and unexpectedly in Australia thanks in large part to the efforts of organisations such as KidSafe in Queensland and other states. 
Their action has drawn much needed attention to unsafe sleeping practices for infants, but more still needs to be done, particularly in Indigenous communities and in remote and lower socioeconomic areas where the death rate remains unacceptably high. And that is where this guide is so critically important, not only for families and those working with children, but for manufacturers, designers, retailers, community organisations and the general public who may be unwittingly putting the lives of infants at risk through unsafe products. It will help immeasurably in increasing understanding, identifying strategies and developing standards that can improve the safety of children that all important first year of life. In my career as a doctor and medical administrator, I saw firsthand the distress and trauma suffered by parents who lose a child through unsafe sleeping practices. So I'm very proud and pleased as both patron of Kids Safe Queensland and as governor to see this excellent guide produced. Many infant deaths can be prevented simply by ensuring a safe sleeping environment. But Australia is currently rated 12th of the 36 OECD countries for infant deaths. That may put us well ahead of the US, which is currently in 33rd position, but we remain well behind Iceland, which sits in first position with its enviable rate of just 0.7 deaths per thousand live births. Through its multifaceted, collaborative approach and strong advocacy, Kids Save Queensland is helping Australia to reach that level. The best practice guide is an invaluable tool in the process. It is my my great pleasure to commend and officially launch the guide and to congratulate everyone involved in producing it. Okay, I'd like to thank uh, Susan in particular for chairing the working party and congratulate everyone who's been involved in this very important piece of work. As a child health nurse um, in Queensland, and um, I know that child health nurses are in a, a prime position to educate and advocate and promote uh, safe infant sleep and uh, safe infant sleep environments. So this guide is very, very welcome. So thank you all for attending, everyone who is in the room to, with us today. And thank you to everyone who has joined us on Zoom today. You will all receive a link where you can download the guide after this event. So thank you very much for coming.